Agents and contract negotiations are an area of the game that I'd never really given much thought to, beyond the obvious best practices. But that got me to thinking, is there anything that I'm missing? So I did what any normal, sane human being would do in this scenario. I spent 13 hours analyzing contract negotiations so you don't have to. Apologies, there hasn't been much FM23 content from me on the YouTube side of things uh, just yet. I've been working on a lot of other big projects for the channel that just can't come out straight away, but I fell down this rabbit hole and I felt that I kind of needed to share. One of my biggest frustrations with playing the game last year was constantly backing myself into a corner when it comes to contracts, uh, getting blanked out and getting purpled, as it were. And as much as chat found it pretty entertaining over on stream, where you can find me live Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday, I felt there had to be a better way. So in this video, I'll be showing you my findings from why locking in certain clauses and certainly multiple clauses is an absolute terrible idea to at the end of the video showing you how you can get a player to sack his agent when the player doesn't even play for you. But before we get into the meat and potatoes, some little tips for contracts in case you're unaware of them. The international cap wage clause is an absolute powerhouse, especially for saves with teams further down the pyramid. But I should preface it with this. You may feel that it brings down the wages too low or to a potentially unrealistic level. If so, fair play. Have a wonderful day. I'm just spouting off information. What you do with that information is entirely up to you. If a player that you're looking to sign is from a major nation and doesn't have any cheeky second nationalities kicking about, then you can save enormous amounts of money by offering them a clause that will essentially give them a wage bump should they ever receive an international cap. And this can sometimes reduce a player's wages by over half. In the example I'm about to show you, so he wants £1,700 a week as the base wage from his agent. I can bring this down by well over half, actually, in this scenario, but usually it's around about half. So I'm going to dump in the international wage clause. I'm going to roll this all the way down to 550 now, they're going to keep rejecting it at first, but you just have to be persistent, especially with a patient agent. And eventually, if you push them hard enough, they should agree to it. But just be careful with this, because if they ever do get that elusive cap for whatever reason, your wage structure is about to be hit with a tidal wave of hideousness. But we move. I've broken down my findings into a set of best practices for each stage of the process, from agent scouting all the way through to finalizing the deal. But let's start with the agents themselves. It's important to know who you're going to be dealing with before you fully get stuck in. So head over to the player that you're trying to sign's page and head over to the information tab. Now, for me with this skin, uh, obviously I can find it here, but usually in a normal default skin, it's under information and you should find their agent listed on the left hand side, in this case, Andy Dawson. So click them and go to their profile. So you should see a blurb on the left hand side of their profile, ranging from extreme specific information about their patients and other factors to very vague stuff like oh he's a pisces and he'll be extra patient when uranus is in retrograde it's not exactly perfect but if it is as vague as the astrology section in the back of a newspaper you can go one step further to find the information you need now in this scenario we can see that he's a very patient negotiator anyway so that's usually all you need to know to know that the bar is going to be pretty much at the top and you can work with that however if you didn't know that information head over to his client list if you can find a client of his that hasn't got a club the best thing you can do is just hit approach the sign on that client and then you'll be able to see the bar before you go into negotiations with the player that you actually want. I'm unsure about how much that will actually affect your relationship with agents down the line, but for now, we're fine. Now that we have that information, it's time to actually go and talk to them. In previous iterations of the game, it would have been fine to just go directly to the player, but this year, I feel like it's extremely important to actually discuss things with the agents first. Having this discussion should prevent you from getting blanked. That's the thing where there's like no contract terms when you actually go into the negotiations, and that can cause problems. That's the kind of thing that can turn an agent with the patience of a saint into the guy that is relentlessly honking his horn at you when you fail to drive 60 miles an hour past a school. In all my tests, there was basically zero downside to always saying you were very interested in a player. Uh, generally speaking, it gives you more information up front and has zero effect on the terms they actually ask for when you get into the contract negotiations. In the next screen, always ask for a wage reduction. Uh, most of the time they go for it and there's very little downside to it, except for in one niche scenario, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Even if they say no, it'll still have zero effect on the contract talks going forward. You can also ask for a reduced squad status here, but 90% of the time you can change that down at least one notch when you get into the discussions anyway. Now it's time for the contract discussions themselves. I'm going to use an example from a different save, that way we're sort of jumping across things to show that this isn't just specific to my random Stockport save here. Now obviously if the player already has international caps or is likely to get them very soon, well which this guy already has nine international caps I believe, then obviously the international cap clause is very much off the table. But even with this guy's agent who is incredibly impatient, there is still a surprising amount of this wage you can get off just by being a hard ass with him. My tests show that on average, you can get between 20 to 30% off of a player's contract just by being extremely aggressive up front, even with impatient negotiators. It's still going to take a little bit of back and forth though. You've got to be really pushing them. Hopefully this one should work. And there we go, 8.5k. And that was without touching any of the other clauses. And it's these threshold numbers that I was really looking to find semi-concrete data on. And I think we kind of have it. It's roughly between 20 and 30%. Though of course, as always, it does depend on agents and certain other factors. That's why I gave a range. And this brings 
brings me to my next point, locking in clauses, especially the base wage and the agent fees. And in addition, it's very important not to do it too early in the negotiations. Now you've just seen that we can get this guy for 8.5k a week. We know that because we are seeing it. But now watch what happens when I try to lock in those clauses from the start of the negotiations. So 8.5 his agent fee has dropped. We'll lock both of those things in. Now watch. They've now come back and hit me with a raft of new things, including an extra 75k in signing on fee, an enormous uh, f wage rise if he plays 30 games for the club, uh, an increase to the yearly wage rise, appearance fees, everything has increased, even though we know that they would have gone for that exact contract just if we hadn't tried to push them too hard by locking in the fees. Now, obviously, you wouldn't know this information because you wouldn't have been reloading every contract negotiation hundreds of times to try different variables, but this seems to be a theme across all of them. So just bear that in mind that Getting a bit too trigger happy with those can cost you a lot of money in the back end. It's best to just let the negotiations play out. For another example, flipping back to the Stockport site for a second, we can get this guy 550 a week. Those are the terms with the 2k agent fee. Now watch what happens if I lock that in from the start of the negotiation. Spoiler alert, it doesn't work. You can see that when I try to lock stuff in that's even much higher than that original clause, they still will demand a lot of extra add-ons. In fact, the lowest amount I can actually lock it in from the start on is 850 from 550 to 850, just because we've locked it in. The only thing I'd say that's pretty safe to lock in is the wage rise clause. Usually they keep that in there anyway, though, because it is such an incentive. But for the most part, it's best to leave things as open as you can. Agents like to do the dance before agreeing to the deal. They like to be wined and dined. If you are going to use the international cap wage rise clause, then the safe zone for the base wage that you can set is between 55 and 45% of the original wage amount. So generally speaking, with someone like this chap here, the safe zone would be roughly around about seven to 800 pound a week. As you've already seen, this lad is a bit of a statistical outlier that the fact that we can actually get him for 550. And it's worth noting that the clause itself is actually proportional. So in a slightly more mathematically simple example, if the base wage they wanted was £2,000, you could safely get them probably on £1,000 or maybe even 950 But in order to get that amount, you'd probably have to be offering a wage increase clause of at least £3,000 on the other end. So it's proportional on both sides of the seesaw. It's not an exact science. It's more of a rule of thumb, but just kind of season to taste. Now onto that niche example I mentioned mentioned earlier, as I've already shown that this lad could be signed for £550 a week with those additional clauses. But that was without me actually talking to his agent. Now, when I do talk to his agent, this is where things get weird. So I'm just going to tell him we want him, and then we're obviously going to ask him to drop his wages, which you can see that he has now agreed to do. You will now notice that when we go on to the page, that he now has a starting wage demand of £1,500 a week. So with that logic, you would then expect us to be able to get him on an even cheaper wage. Note the problem I'm having here. I'm going to try one more time, and you'll see what I mean. So let's scroll this down to 550 set that, and it goes red even though we know he'd agree to that. He wouldn't even take 750, which is a full 200 pounds a week more than I was able to get him on before I talked to his agent and asked him to drop his uh, wage demand. Now, this could, in fact, be a bug. That, that's certainly up for grabs. But in my head canon, it's more a case of the agent being like, I've already agreed to drop the wages. Stop taking the piss. And that's why with certain incredibly high patience agents, sometimes it is better to just circumvent them entirely and go directly to the player to avoid yourself getting into scenarios like this. I realize at this point I am just pinching the pennies, but that's kind of the point of the video. Now, I promised at the start of the video that I'd show you a way to get a player to sack their agent, even though they don't actually play for you. I know it seems that he plays for us. He's only on trial at the moment. Bear that in mind. Now, this very much does not work every single time, but I have had it work a few times and there are definitely some downsides to it. This might have just been a thing for ages, honestly, and I just never noticed. But regardless, you can see from here that Janelle Bennett's agent is Danny Blackman. If we don't go and approach to sign Janelle Bennett, and let's just say hypothetically that the deal falls through and we're forced into a position where we have to walk away. If we now immediately go back to Janelle Bennett's profile, you'll now see under the information, agent listed as none. I noticed this by accident, honestly, when I was just going through some stuff. But the reason this is useful is because our contract negotiations have broken down, which means you cannot re-enter them. Except because he's now sacked his agent, we can now go back in and talk to him by himself without an agent present. It's a little bit sketchy, if I'm honest. The other beautiful thing is very often in these scenarios, the player will demand less wages and less add-ons than they did when they were with the agent. And even more importantly, you get to swerve the agent fee entirely, which in the lower leagues can actually make quite a big difference when you've barely got two pennies to push together. The only thing I've yet to be able to fully test is the long-term impacts of your relationships with the agents due to you doing these things. But luckily, there are so many agents and players in the game pool of FM that you shouldn't run into too many problems, I can't imagine. So give the video a like, subscribe if you're new, and uh, happy contracting.